Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Josh Boscreen here with some bass in your face. Today, we are finishing our four-part series on playing seventh chords on the bass guitar. In the previous three weeks, we have learned how to play minor, major, and dominant seventh chords on the bass guitar, and we've learned fun little ditties to go along with each one. Well, today, it's all coming together, folks, because most of the time when you play these chords, you're not going to only play one of them for the whole song, so this time we're going to put it in real life in a real song that I did not make up. And it's called Autumn Leaves, and it's a jazz standard, and you probably know it. So, we're going to use the shapes we've learned, which we'll review briefly, and uh, then we're going to play through the progression a couple of different ways. You need to download the PDF to follow along, there's a link below. You can click on it, and you can get it, and it's free, and isn't that wonderful? Okay, so the first thing we're going to review is our minor 7 chord shapes. And one thing I've reiterated there uh, that I said in our minor 7 video is that these voicings, since there's no fifth in the voicing, you can use the same shape for minor 7 as you can for a half diminished chord, which is that little circle with the line through it. That means half diminished. So if you look at those little notes I have in parentheses there, those are the fifths of the chords. So if you were to play a minor 7 chord with the fifth, you've got that uh, E natural there. But if you were to play a half diminished with the fifth, you'd have the flat 5. So they are different chords, they're not exactly the same, but if you leave out the fifth, then they look the same. And we are leaving out the fifth because it's just a little bit easier to get wrap your hands around, um, and it works okay for these purposes. But you can always add it in if you want. It's a little tricky to get the fingering up on those higher frets. You might want to use your thumb like a weirdo, or um, just mess with it and get the bar clean. So anyway, we're going to leave out the fifths when we actually go through this progression, but I just wanted to totally clarify that point about minor 7 versus half diminished. Okay, so that's our E string shape for uh, the minor 7 chords and the half diminished chords. We'll see. It's just A, G, and C on the, on the uh, A chord, straight across. Okay, enough of all that business about fifths and flats and whatnot. Um, next uh, shape to review is the dominant 7. I've just written all these out in A, but obviously we're going to play them uh, in different places as we go through the progression. Uh, dominant 7th chord compared to the minor 7, we just raise the 3rd up to a major 3rd and keep the flat 7, and that gives you your, your E string shape for the minor 7 chord. And then if we bring the minor 7 up to a major 7 and keep the major 3rd, that gives us the major 7. So you've got minor 7 slash half diminished, dominant 7 with the 3rd up, and then major 7 with the 7th back up. Okay, so once you're cool with those, then uh, the A string shapes, same deal. Uh, minor 7 slash half diminished, you've got A, C, and G, Mo uh, root, minor 3rd, and minor 7th. Dominant 7, bring that 3rd up, the middle note, uh, up a half step, so you've got a uh, major 3rd and a minor 7th. And then for major 7, bring that 7th up to G sharp in this case, root, major 3rd, major 7th. And we'll talk more about left hand fingering going through the progression, because like I've said in previous weeks, there are different fingerings you can use for all these chords, but depending on the progression you're doing, uh, different fingerings will make more sense. So I'll uh, try to give you a nice smooth fingering as we go through this progression. Okay, so Autumn Leaves is just one of many jazz standards that you can practice these chord voicings on, and I really encourage you to just grab a real book and uh, practice. We're going to go through this progression two different ways, just like we have in uh, previous weeks in this, in this series. We're going to start uh, the first time we're going to start on an E string shape for the first chord and then alternate through the progression and then the next time we'll start uh, with the A string shape which is exercise two there. But first of all, exercise one, uh, let me explain this a little bit and then we'll play it. So this progression is great for uh, practicing jazz when you're first starting out because uh, the root movement is all in fourths. It's just sort of a, a diatonic circle fourths progression. Four chord, seven chord, three, six, two, five, one. Totally uh, straight, straight up circle progression there. Um, so the reason that's cool for these chord voicings is that you have very good voice leading because um, when your roots are moving in fourths, uh, your sevenths and thirds flip in a really nice way. Uh, so that uh, guide tones aren't moving very far. And again, guide tones just means thirds and sevenths. Let's just talk through this chord by chord and then we'll play it in time. First chord is A minor 7, and I would advise you to make sure your pinky is on the G string note, and then you can go pinky, ring, second finger from there. So I'm going middle finger on the root, third finger on the seventh, and then pinky on the top note. And the reason we're going to do that is once you got that, when we go to the next chord, D7, 
your pinky can stay on that C on the G string because it's a common tone between the chords. So then you've got third finger on the root D, second finger on F sharp, and fourth finger on C. So first chord we've got middle, ring, pinky. Second chord we've got ring, middle, pinky. Uh, and then we're going to do a similar thing going through the next two chords. So we've got D7, now we're going to G major 7. We're going to do the same fingering we did for the A minor 7. Second finger, third finger, fourth finger. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and do second finger, first finger, fourth finger for the next chord, the C major 7. So again, that pinky is staying on, the, on a common tone on the G string, so you don't actually have to move it. And then, uh, next chord is F sharp half diminished, which we're just playing our minor 7 voicing because there's no 5th. But keep in mind that it does come from the Locrian, not from the Dorian, okay? Um, so same, same fingering here, 2, 3, 4. And then we're going to go to B dominant 7, which is not a diatonic chord, but we like to have a major 3rd in our 5 chords to tonicize our roots. Now don't we, kids? I'll talk about that in another video. If it doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. Just, just play the thing. Uh, okay, so F sharp half diminished to B7, and again, keep the pinky on the common tone. There's lots of common tones in this progression because uh, it's a circle force progression, and that's just how it is. Uh, to E minor 7. Same fingering, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so that's the fingerings. You can rewind through that if you need to see it again, but let's just play through this with our excellent jazz drummer. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. thing to pay attention to is at first if you're first if you're just learning these chord voicings you're not going to be able to make your uh, note lengths as connected as I was just doing here there's very little space between the chords ringing that's because I'm going pretty fast from voicing to voicing with my left hand but when you're first doing it it's going to be a little bit more like piecemeal and you're going to kind of be lucky to like get there in time for the next bar so that's totally cool it doesn't have to sound amazing at first but eventually you want these uh, chord changes with your left hand to be fast enough that you can um, have the notes be as connected or as unconnected and staccato as you want and not have it be a function of your limited technique, you want it to be a function of your intentional musical choices. Does that make sense? So, um, so you know, don't worry about your note duration at first, but it's a goal you want to eventually be able to connect the chords uh, without a lot of space in between each chord ringing. I'm going to bring, bring them together. Just so you're able to do it. You don't always have to do that, but um, I think that makes sense. Um, okay, so that's that, and obviously if you're playing this in real life, you could do some different comping rhythms and not just play whole notes, but I'll leave that to you to explore because it's a complex topic of how to do good comping rhythms, and I can't just throw it into the middle of this video, now can I? Um, okay, let's go to exercise two, which is the same progression, the A section of Autumn Leaves, but we're going to start on an A string shape for the first chord, the A minor seven, which means we're going to be flipped around for all the other chords. Uh, rather than going E string, A string, E string, A string, E string, A string, E string with our roots, we're going to go A, E, A, E, A, E, A. Flipped. That makes sense? Same deal, same uh, chords, just with our alternate voicings that we also know. Okay, so again, we want to keep common tones as much as possible. So, um, we're going to start with third finger, first finger, fourth finger. That's low to high, A, C, G, third, first, fourth. And then I'm going to go first, second, fourth. So the pinky's just coming down a half step and the other fingers have to move around a bit. For the D7 chord, index, middle, pinky. Now for the G chord, the pinky's on a common tone. And we got two, one, four. And then for the C chord, everything moves a little bit. Index, ring, pinky. Now common tone on the pinky again, third, first, fourth for the F sharp half diminished, and then one, two, four for the B7, and then three, one, four for the E minor seven. 
So really, you can do whatever fingering you want. You just want to watch for common tones and try to stick the same finger on them if possible to make things simpler for yourself. And maybe there's even a way you can make that fingering more efficient than I did. Um, if you do, feel free to post it below and everybody can enjoy your wisdom. So uh, here we go, same deal with the excellent jazz drums. A one, two, swing it, catch! Okay, so really the point of this video is not just to teach you autumn leaves, but I want to show you my basic approach for going through any jazz progression with these seventh chord voicings. So what you can learn from what we've done so far is uh, that when you have progressions where the roots are moving in fourths, you know, here you've got a, a, a tritone instead of a perfect fourth, but that's still a type of fourth. So when you've got progressives that are moving in fourths, your guide tones are going to flip. So sevenths are going to turn into thirds, and thirds are going to turn into sevenths as you move through the progression. So just, uh, I talked about that in another one of the videos in this series, but just to clarify, A minor seven is A, G, and C. Uh, G is the seventh, and C is the third. Now when we go to D7, C is the seventh, and G moves down a half step and becomes F sharp, which is the third. So the seventh turns into the third, and the third turns into the seventh as we go to the next chord. So that's something to watch with guide tones. It takes, takes some practice to get used to, but um, it's, it's a good thing to notice. And then the other thing is you just want to, um, you know, mess around with different progressions. Uh, it's not always, you're not always going to be able to smooth things out by swapping shapes like the way I've had you do it. Um, you know, if you have a more stepwise progression, like I just thought of uh, uh, Recordame is another jazz standard. The first two chords are A minor 7 to C minor 7. Well, that, those roots are only a minor third apart, so you pretty much have to move in parallel um, if you're going to stick with these same shapes. So uh, it's not always, you don't always have to smooth out the voice leading, is what I'm trying to say. You could walk through a whole progression and actually only use E string shapes. And there's nothing horribly wrong with that. It's just hard to move around the neck if you're not used to it and it doesn't sound smooth. Um, but I really encourage you to uh, work on this through some other jazz standards, starting with the other half of this song. There are very similar chords in the B part, so um, you should be able to take a similar approach that we did in the A part and apply it yourself. And I would uh, love to hear about how that goes for you in the comments below. And uh, if there are any clarifications I can make there, I'd be happy to do that. Um, okay, so really, do this through other standards. I, I feel like I've said that three times already, but um, do it through other standards, for sure. Um, because then you can just pick up a real book, flip open to any page, and just walk through the progression with these chords. And um, that gives you a lot of freedom. You know, you can create play-along tracks for yourself, although, you know, the kids tell me that you can have automatic play-alongs on these iPad apps. But anyway, um, what I used to do is make little loops on my loop station for myself playing these chords. And then maybe I'd play a bass line. And then I could do a little solo over it, and it's like you can do the whole package. You just learn the modes for the, uh, for the bass line, one of the voicings for the accompaniment, and then practice uh, soloing all over the top of it. It's pretty fun to create it all yourself like that. Okay, so I feel like that's enough on that. Um, I really hope that you'll try to do this on the B part of Autumn Leaves on your own as homework, and apply it to any other standards you want to. Um, I think I've, I've given you the tools you need to pretty much get through the whole real book. Uh, not counting weird alterations and stuff. Okay, so this is the end of our series on seventh chords. I hope that you've enjoyed it and learned all about seventh chords and that you're just so happy about seventh chords that now you know how to play. And uh, I'll see you next time for another bass lesson. If you want to show your support for these lessons, you can check out Patreon or make a donation through my website. And I really appreciate when you all do that. And you can also buy my new book, Beastly Scales and Arpeggios. Check it out. See you guys soon.